All right. Obviously, you were on this show before, and this show changed things for you. Tell me how it changed things. Well, all right. Well, before we do that, like, let me let me ask you guys this, just so I know. I know how you guys want me to answer the questions, right? And so if I'm just talking about, well, you know, the other show, right? People might be like, well, what the f is the other show? Three years ago, National Geographic Channel told inmate Chris Timrick's story. Timrick was already a two-year veteran of Hayes State Prison, where he was known as Yankee, in for murdering a friend. He had a total of 20 wounds on him, right? 12 of which were stab wounds, six in the front and six in the back. I had no idea I had even done this, right? And they found me guilty of felony murder and malice murder and gave me a life sentence. Yankee claimed the attack was provoked, that post-traumatic stress disorder sent him over the edge, and he was determined to not spend the rest of his life in prison. You see guys walking around that are 20, 30, 40 years into the chain gang, been here their whole lives, man, and don't amount to nothing. That's just not who I want to be. Even as he fought to get out, Yankee was building a life behind bars and developing a newfound talent. I mean, I've only been doing this tattoo thing for like seven, eight months or something now, you know what I mean? So I guess, you know, it's been said that I'm, I'm picking this up pretty quick. So for all y'all, uh, see this on TV, they call me Yankee, go ahead and holler at me. I'll hook you up, right? Today, Yankee still lives at Hayes State Prison, where his TV appearance has made him a chain gang celebrity. So, Yankee, you guys know Yankee? Yeah, I know Yankee. I seen him on TV before I met him. So when I seen him, I was like, oh, snap, but you was on, you was on uh, uh, National Geographic. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, okay, that's what's up, man. You know what I mean? I All right, so since. The last time you guys were here and I was on TV, I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been good and it's been bad. Just trying to show him your good side, yeah. Yeah, man. Every time the show airs, I get like a stack of mail. It's Hollywood this, movie star that, and celebrity Yankee, and all kind of back then, you know what I mean? I charged, I guess, typical tattoo man rates, right? Well, that's over with now. Now everybody knows who I am, everybody wants my tattoos. And now you're telling me that you want a tattoo from me because you see me on this TV show, well, pay for it then, you know what I'm saying? Yankee's work is more in demand than ever. It's a far cry from three years ago, when business was just getting started, and Sean Rockefeller was a loyal customer. He said, man, I want my arm to resemble just crazy, wacky, insane, chaotic, all kind of just whatever. And I said, well, OK, let me think. When people see the tattoos, they will automatically know that there has been some insanity. There has been some chaotic moments you know, I have gone through worse, and I've come out the other end. Back then, just where Rockefeller would end up was still uncertain. He had come to prison at 18 years old, with up to five years to serve. It's called being green, fresh to the system. I was scared, yeah. I was scared hearing all the stories. I know my odds, and I know what I'm up against. All these, you know, stabbings and rapings and murders and just all kinds of negative stuff. I'm not down with it, and I'm going to fight. Fight till I die if I got to. To survive his time, Rockefeller had to change. 
from a fledgling inmate to a seasoned convict. But three years ago, news came down that would set him on a different path. It says uh, you were scheduled for release on parole on May 20th, 2008. I am going home. You know, it's exciting. Now that I got, like, the physical evidence, the paper, it's real, you know? I'm ready to ride. Adjusting when coming out on the street was very hard. I almost had this like hoorah attitude, you know, like, yeah, I'm a I'm a tough dude, I'm a tough dude. And getting out, living like that, out here on the street does not work, does not fly. Today, 24-year-old Rockefeller is a world away from the life he lived at Hayes. For almost three years now, he's been staying with his grandmother in the Atlanta suburbs. Yeah. You know, I was her little baby boy grandson, you know, real clean cut kid. Now I'm sleeved up and we got this harder demeanor. I'm a felon, I'm a, I'm a convict, you know? It was very scary to walk back out into the streets and know that I'm a changed man. I'm not the person my family once knew. It's Rockefeller. That's my little dude, though. that's my buddy, man. I'm not no kind of hater, man. Somebody gets out of prison, I'm happy for him. The only thing that would upset me is if he did some stupid and come back, you know what I mean? Look at my position, look at my situation. You wanna be here? No. You don't have no life sentence hanging over your head like I got. It sucks, man. And I got goals and dreams and everything else too, you know? I would love to pursue a career in tattooing, have my own parlor someday. I mean, yeah, this is like on the job training, man. I got unlimited skin in here, you know what I'm saying? And by the time I get out, I'm gonna have it down. But for a lifer with a murder charge, getting out is a distant possibility. And these days, Yankee has a more immediate problem. Tattooing is illegal behind bars. Dirty needles spread infections. And gang symbols stoke violence. So officers keep the pressure up on inmates who run them. There's not a single police here that doesn't know me. Cadets come in training. They've seen me on TV. They know who I am. They know I run tattoos. Morning, man. The warden here. Man, the first time he seen me, he came in the dormitory, walked the whole dormitory, got to myself, the last cell, stopped, looked at me, and said, uh, you ain't gonna be running no tattoos in my prison. I said, all right, I got you, sir. So far, Yankee isn't heeding the warning. But he's on the administration's radar. And now, his celebrity status might be catching up with him. Totally. 
gangs, violence, drugs. Once life in prison gets comfortable, there may be no going back. But one inmate is determined to break the cycle. Hear, O Israel! Hear, O Israel! The Lord our God! The Lord our God! Love the Lord your God! Love the Lord your God! With all your heart! With all your soul! With all your soul! With all your strength! With all your strength! The very words of God and all God's children said, Amen! Amen. Yes. Today, Stephen Crane is a model inmate. But three years ago, his life was on a very different course. 434 H3, Hayes State Prison. Hayes Rumors. You can tell everybody's on edge watching. It's pretty much up in the air about what it's about to be or what it could be. Come through the door one at a time. In 2008, Crane was new to the system, and he had just arrived at Hayes State Prison, one of the hardest camps in Georgia. Here, you definitely got guys who are going to be here, you know, for a long time, if not forever. What's it matter to them if they want to take it to a, a whole nother level? You, you can't be afraid of all those type of things. When the time comes, you just got to do what you got to do. Stand up for yourself, no matter the consequences. It's a philosophy that brought Crane to prison in the first place. In 2003, he shot and killed a man whom Crane claims threatened his life on the street. I'm here because I was in a fearful situation for my life, and I had to stand up for myself. That's always in the back of your mind that that could repeat itself, even in prison system. But that attitude was soon to change. Just five weeks after arriving at Hayes, Crane transferred to another camp. And with the new terrain came a new approach to doing time. You always are going to feed off your environment. You know, at Hayes, it was tense. You could feel it in the air. When I got here, I had for a couple of weeks, you know, feeling everything out. You were able to just let go of that. It's just like being in the middle of a storm and then getting on calm waters. Today, Crane lives in the permanent unit at Georgia's Diagnostic Prison. What's up, bud? It's a tight-knit community by chain gang standards. I have more on the street. And a positive place to mark the time. I get up every morning and go to work in the chaplain's office. For me, it's almost like going home eight hours a day. I come back, uh, they do count. I work out. By the time I get through working out, I can lay down and go to sleep. So the days fly by for me real fast here. While Crane points his life in a new direction, 200 miles south, another inmate is making changes of his own. And for Elliot Crowell, the process has been even more profound. I'm what they call retired. I still keep up my hygiene and all that. I'm just not going through the grooming process that I used to go through because that was part of living the lifestyle. Every inmate adapts and improvises to make prison more comfortable. But three years ago, Kral was taking it one step further. Now that's the lip liner. It was a colored pencil broke it up into smaller pieces and let it soak in that with some water. I came into prison bisexual. I have a kid out there. But in prison, you can hardly have a male and female relationship. So if you're already attracted to a man, it's only natural for you to try to find a companion in one of these inmates. 
At Hayes, Crowell went by the name Samantha. And although sex is illegal and dangerous in prison, for Crowell, it was worth the risk. It's just so much easier when you're in a financially stable relationship. You ain't got the stress of trying to get your habits taken care of, cigarettes, coffee, food. Costs a lot more than a honey bar, you can believe that. As far as inmates are concerned, we're just as close to being a female as they're going to get. So they're not going to allow nobody to really hurt us or take advantage of us. Will you be Samantha when you leave here? <laughs> That's a hard question, to be honest. That's a hard question to answer. Due to the fact that I've lived this lifestyle for the past four or five years now, it'd be hard to change. I don't know, I'd had to wait and see till I got out there. Today, it seems the convict is looking to change his old ways. Two months ago, Growl transferred to Smith State Prison. Since then, he's taken himself out of the mix by checking into segregation and letting go of Samantha. It's not saying I'm no longer homosexual. I'm saying I'm not participating in the lifestyle with other inmates. I just decided, look, I'll spend the rest of my time in segregation, taking myself away from the other problems out there on the chain gang. Make sure that I have the attitude so I'm not going to come back to the system. But that commitment is about to be tested. After 11 years in prison, Crowell is getting released in six days. I remember the things I went through before I got locked up. I want that again. I don't want to be in the chain gang any longer. That I've been able to do 11 years is showing me how strong the willpower and how strong the mentality I got. You think I want to sit up in this for the rest of my life? I don't, man. I done did 23 straight years, man. This is not what's happening. Best believe now, when I say Georgia done broke me, they done broke me in the sense of doing time. I ain't coming back to this no more. I'm ready to go home. After years spent behind bars, Going home can become a fantasy, easier dreamed of than done. A reality that hit Sean Rockefeller hard in the time since he left prison. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Just waking up. Crappy day, but I love it anyways. I'm ready to make some money, bro. Jobs are hard to come by for a felon, and Rockefeller never graduated high school. So to make ends meet, he's had to get creative. All right, man, get to work. He calls it scrapping, salvaging and reselling old metal. I find metal all over the place. The different metals pay different prices at scrap yards. Oh, we got aluminum. Ah, score. That's some copper right there. That's... Copper's where it's at, dude. I love yeah. this stuff. You could say it's like being a scavenger. That's how I kind of look at it. I don't see anything. Reduced to having to scavenge my way to have something in life due to, you know, the screwed up situation that I've been stuck in. That situation originated with his crime. In 2004, Rockefeller turned 18, and his relationship with his 15-year-old girlfriend became a felony. The girl's mother pressed charges, and Rockefeller was convicted of statutory rape. 
a sentence that sent him to prison for four years and landed him on the state's sex offender registry. Here I am, this dude right below me, child molestation. Dude right below him, child molestation. Those who get to know me, I'll explain the situation and story. But if they don't know me personally, they're going to assume that simply because I'm on the list, I'm one of the worst, period. My probation officer shows up to my house whenever. You know, just show up and surprise me. How are you doing? You had to use this cup. You couldn't hear the door? No, I couldn't hear the door. Is your grandmother here? No. Or she's at work? No. Even on the street, Rockefeller is still under the watchful eye of the system. A reminder of the world he left behind. And back at Hayes, Yankee is having a run-in of his own with the authorities. Don't you have these folks feel them all? This crock of ass going on right now. Let's do it. OK, that's good. Come on, cuff up. A letter from the free world arrived for Yankee today. But this one contains something more, a photograph of Yankee himself. The administration suspects it's a self-portrait taken with a cell phone, emailed to someone outside of the prison, who then mailed it back to Yankee. And if he's found guilty, it could mean time in the hole and loss of the few privileges he has. I got a visitation coming up in two weeks, man. I won't be allowed to go to visitation. And it's supposed to be my whole family's coming. I'm supposed to be up there hugging them and kissing them and all that stuff, and ain't none of that gonna happen now, you know? Yankee will remain in segregation while the prison investigates the photos. For now, his life is at a standstill. At Hayes State Prison in Tryon, Georgia, Yankee is out of the hole. Less than four hours after being locked down for suspicious photos. The prison determined that the images were from the first season of Hard Time, mailed in by a Free World fan. Inmate Timrick was suspected of having a cell phone in his possession. It is a felony in Georgia to have one. But uh, investigation was completed and uh, determined that this was taken off the internet. So he's definitely got an admirer. It wasn't nothing more than last time I was on the show, you know, I, I turned into this <laughs> hey celebrity and got all these letters. People started supporting me and want to send me money and look out for me. And <laughs> Probably some chick. I really like this picture of you. I seen it on the internet. With his name cleared, Yankee is free to take the photo and return to the tears. Hey, but look, though, for real, y'all, when I go back inside, man, you know, we can just pick this up another day or something. I'm blowed right now, man. I'm, I'm mad as hell. Screw prison, man. The only thought I'm gonna have about prison is I just need to check myself, make sure I don't come back. You know what I mean? Keep in mind that this sucks and I don't wanna be here again. And that's it. Other than that, man, I'm gonna forget all about this place.
But for a lifer like Yankee, getting out is no sure thing. His efforts in court have been denied. And though he holds out hope of one day leaving Hayes, release is where the real challenges begin. When I first got out, I was the most visible thing in the world. Everybody could see me. Everybody knew I was a sex offender. Everybody knew I'd been to prison. Everybody looked at me and was disgusted. I felt like that. I couldn't live at my mom's house because of my little sister. I couldn't live at dad's house because of a park. I had to be in the house at a certain time. I had an ankle monitor on me. I tried to escape being a sex offender, escape the registry, escape life in general. Getting high so that I didn't have to deal with my problems and that just was a never ending spiral down. Seven months after leaving prison in 2008, Rockefeller was arrested for failure to register as a sex offender. After another four months in prison, he was arrested again for violating his probation. I finally sat down and I thought, I'm weak to keep running. It's easy to live in jail. I can live in prison. I can do it. Everything that I didn't want to be, that I met in prison, I was becoming one of those guys. If I feel comfortable in here and feel uncomfortable out there, what would stop me from thinking, all right, I'd rather be in prison than be out here? And I don't want to fall into that kind of type of mentality. It's a reckoning that's fast approaching for Elliot Crowell. In just two days, he'll return to the streets to face the temptations that brought him to prison in the first place. My choice of drugs was crack cocaine. It got so bad that a friend of mine offered to pay me to burn his house down because he was behind on bills. The money he offered, I'm like, wow, I can buy a bunch of crack with that and get high for the whole weekend or whatever. That, that's how bad my, my habit was. I could have ended up overdosing on drugs. I could have ended up somebody robbing and killing me. I believe me getting placed behind bars saved my life. My biggest fear would be going back and using drugs again. Spending 11 years to avoid crack cocaine and then go out there on the street and use it again. That would be like saying everything I've worked for might as well stayed in. Appreciate it, man. Take it easy. Have you ever had a picture that was double exposed? You sitting there seeing a memory in that same spot. You remember what was there, and now you're seeing something different. These 11 years for me, it hasn't been a bad time. I mean, yeah, I've lost my freedom. I've lost everything I owned on the street. But to me, I've had a good time in prison. 
Am I going to commit a crime so I can come back to prison and have a good time? No, I hope not. <laughs> I hope it ain't been that fun. At Smith State Prison in southern Georgia, release day has come for Elliot Crowell. Anxious, nervous a little bit, ready to see my family, ready to walk out in gates. After 10 years, 364 days, and 23 hours of being behind these walls, it's time for me to go home. There's a whole life experience I've found inside these walls, and it's becoming emotionally challenged right now to hold it all in. The prison is driving Crowell the 30 miles to his grandparents' house, where he'll be living. The first step on a daunting path to freedom. All kind of things going through my head. When I meet my family, their reaction of reuniting with my child, getting a job, getting my food stamps. I can start getting back into the free world, the way of life out there in the free world. After spending so many years in prison, and getting out on the street, it's hard to become, you know, a regular citizen. You know you're not anymore. You are a convict. You are the black mark of society. To become a regular Joe will never happen. You come running out those gates into the free world, you're a convict running out of those gates into the free world. Take it easy, man. Good luck. Speak to you. Oh, no, no, no. see no cyclone fence, no barbed wire. I just 
it's amazing. Uh, is being free. What if you mess up? That's uh, that, that's that's hard to even imagine. Cause I'm not going to. Visitation day at the prison known as Jackson. For these few hours, Stephen Crane is home again. Hey, kiddo. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Good. My family's been there from the very beginning. Ever since the very first day of this incident, they've always been there right by my side. I mean, they never spared anything to take care of me. That's one of the things in life that I probably took for granted on the street. But seeing the people who don't have that has definitely changed my perspective on that and it's made me more grateful for it. Crane is one of the lucky ones. His parents offer him support and he has a job and a place to stay when he gets out on the street. Love you. Oh. Love you. I love you too. I'll see you next week. And these days, that's no longer a faraway goal. I've been locked up for seven years now, and I'll be eligible for a halfway house in 18 months. The end is almost here. As that light starts to get closer and closer, it's like it brightens up everything around you as well. For the time being, Stephen Crane will stay at Jackson absorbing the lessons of his sentence and applying them to a future in the free world. I'm a lot more comfortable with who I am. Definitely recognize a lot of the things that are more precious in life. I think that I'll be able to live life fuller because of the experiences that I've gone through. It's been more than a month since Yankee got out of the hole and he's since settled back into life on the tiers. But lately, his chain gang celebrity has added something new to the regular routine. Since the last TV show, I get a letter from this chick in Wisconsin. Hey, this is me. And OK, cool. So I wrote her back, you know? We got to write, and eventually we started liking each other a little bit. But now, a year and some change later, I guess we're probably engaged. I guess you could say that. Yankee and his girlfriend have never officially met. They know each other through phone calls and letters. But that hasn't stopped him from planning for the future. We're trying to raise money to get me an attorney for my habeas corpus. Hell yeah, I'm optimistic. You know what I mean? I want a wife and kids and all that. I, I'm not going to be able to do that when I'm 50, 60 years old. Me staying in prison for the rest of my life is not an option. Me staying in prison for the next 10 years is not an option. Period. Yankee will probably hate me for this, but spend 10 years in prison, dude. Spend 10 years in prison, dude. Get out. Him, like me, we both have to suffer our, our crime. All right, buddy. Great to meet For the next nine years, Sean Rockefeller will report to his probation officer and could remain on the sex offender registry for decades. Come on. But he's determined to not repeat the mistakes of the past. Oddly enough, being in prison was a very positive experience. I've learned a lot about myself, my body, my mind, my heart, my emotions. As time wore on, 
and I got back to becoming more myself, more a free Sean instead of a locked up rock. Don't get me wrong, you know, the label and the sign, the stigma exist. But as far as having any resentment now, I work through it. I'm just another average Joe. I'm gonna overcome being a sex offender. I'm gonna overcome being a convicted felon. And eventually have the freedom that I deserve. I will never go back to prison. Get in line, single file. All right, gentlemen, listen up. First word out of your mouth, this institution will be served. The last word out of your mouth will be served. Everybody understand that? Sir, sir yes, sir. sir. Just seven months after his release, Elliot Crowell is back in the system. I didn't realize things had gotten so tough out there. We didn't about. 36 hours of being on the street, I was drinking already. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. Smoking weed again, committing crimes. Come on, let's party, Elliot. You've been locked up for so long. Now enjoy yourself. And I just let myself be pulled into it. Elliot Crowd, go in here and grab your mat. Go to bed, 37 Crowell was charged with burglarizing homes for copper wire and selling it as scrap. But his stay at Jackson is only the beginning. Eventually, he'll ship out to another camp where he must decide how he will do the time. When I played the role as Samantha, it, it was a survival tool. I've been in some dangerous camps. I got up underneath somebody that I knew would, would, wouldn't let nothing happen to me. But y'all go to prison and see how y'all live. You know, you might be doing something you wouldn't think you'd have to do to survive. 